Christianity has changed a lot in the past three weeks because of this class. As a child, I grew up going to church and going to youth group. So yes, I knew most of the Bible stories and went through the motions. But I never really fully understood what they meant until midweek last week. <clears throat> I learned that every story or passage in the Bible always relates to another story or passage. For example, when we drew the triangle with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it gave me a literal meaning of how they were connected and how they weren't connected. In Romans chapter 1, verses 2-4, through 4, He promised before through His prophets and the Holy Scriptures concerning His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God, with power according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection of the dead. In Romans, this is how the Holy Trinity is described. However, there are different explanations throughout the Bible that indirectly say the same thing. This helped me understand that the Bible works together and relates back to everything. This means that the Holy Trinity has God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are three in one, and... An analogy my grandmother taught me is that the Holy Trinity is like an egg. The parts of the egg are the shell, the white, and the yolk. They each have their own identities. One part of the egg will not work without the other two parts. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit make up the Holy Trinity. They together are one entity. The Holy Trinity is a perfect example of when you said, The worst thing you can do is take the Bible one verse at a time. You have to look at the big picture and read the whole thing, like how it was written in letter form <coughs> in class. I think that this is what I was doing, is taking one verse at a time, and that's why I never fully understood the Bible. I still don't, but I can at least wrap my arms around it all. The thesis for the book of Romans, <coughs> chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. So as much as in me, I am, I am ready to preach to the gospel. To you are in Rome also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, These shall not be lived by faith. This means that they cannot work alone, they have to work together as one, like a clock's counterparts. I knew that these three things work together in the orthodox way, this quote, whoa, lost my stop. <clears throat> I knew that these three things work together. In the orthodox way, this quote hit me pretty hard because it was so powerful in understanding. If we are to be accurate in speaking of creation, we should not use the past tense, but the continuous present. This quote is very powerful because it means that just because the Bible is finished being written doesn't mean that God's work is done. God has work every day and is continuous every second. The world changes to some degree. This goes back to when we talked about the past, present, and future in class. <clears throat> Mr. Harrell said there is no such thing as present, meaning if you think about something by the time you say it or think about it more, it is already in the past. So God's work is all, either all in the past for what he has done or all in the future for what he is going to do. When I signed up for this class, I wasn't expecting what I got out of it. I didn't come to strengthen my religious views. In fact, I had no intentions of learning about the Bible more. However, I was completely wrong. I found this out very quickly when we started talking about indirectly thinking and directly think thinking, or directly feeling. This relates to life, love, and what you believe. In John chapter 16, verses 13 through 15. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare to you. <clears throat> All things the Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will, make, he will take of mine and declare it to you. This means that if you feel the Holy Spirit inside you, then you will be glorified by God. Coming back to directly feeling something, you said in class, feelings take control of what you do, but only a mature person can distinguish the difference between feelings and thoughts. What they think is right or what they feel is right. <clears throat> this made me think about how I felt about the Bible and really strengthened my belief. Because I realized I felt it was, I realized I felt I wasn't just thinking of it because I know it was right to go to church and I know uh, it wasn't just going through the motions anymore. So I know it wasn't just going through the motions anymore. In the orthodox way, where states, to, indirect, to indicate the two poles of God's relationship to us is unknown yet. 
well known, hidden yet revealed. The orthodox tradition draws a distinct line, distinct line between the essence, nature, or inner being of God. On the one hand, and his energies, operations, or acts of powers on the other. <clears throat> this means that there is a difference between his essence and his energies. So he believes that you have to feel to really grasp it. You can't just think about it. Like I said, I didn't expect for this course to strengthen my beliefs at all, but it did in a major way. I can now understand the Bible, and through the Orthodox way, I can relate it to my everyday life, which is very useful. This book has given me the ability to think about free will. God gives us the ability to truth to, and embrace it. If you accept the truth, you will have the ability to love. If you do not accept the truth, then you won't have the ability to love. Learning about the Bible using the Orthodox way as a guide, I have been able to embrace truth and have learned to love God more with His indisputable love. I feel like this will help a mature person in life, or help me mature as a person in life. In John chapter 8, verse 32, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So, shall set you free. The truth shall set you free is a self-explanatory, coming back to the orthodox way. If you accept the truth and embrace it, you will be free. If you are truthful with your faith, then your faith will lead you to salvation, which is the ultimate goal to make it into heaven.